Hello and welcome YouTube and Grim Dawn community. Today I want to show you another of my builds. This time it is the Acid Retaliation Witchblade. I played this character in the Grim Dawn Community League Season 1 and I used this character to face tank Ravager and Kalagaja. So this is a very very good and also not even that hard to build character for face tank and these kind of super bosses. And also it is very much viable for all other main campaign content like doing all the dungeons. And it is also like decent for farming like Crucible or Shadow Ram as well. Not necessarily the fastest for that kind of stuff, but where it really shines is to like face tag those kind of super bosses like Ravager and Kalagaja. Oh, I don't have potions on, <laughs> you're right. Oh my god, lol. Oh my fucking god, wait, I'm doing this without potions, okay, that's why. <laughs> oh, what the heck, how did I not like use potions, dude? <laughs> there we go. Can we use Rage again now? I don't know, maybe not. But I think like without Sigil this would have not been possible, right? Like Sigil actually like heals me so much, like... Wait, where's her? Where's her hood? Oh, there it is. So if you are looking for a retaliation build that is actually not necessarily that hard to put together and has a pretty decent kill time for like Kalagaja as well as Ravager and it's also like pretty safe for hardcore. I did play this character in softcore back in the league because League Season 1 was a softcore league. However, as you can see my third page of my character, I still have zero deaths on this character and I did kill enemies like Kalagado and Ravager as well. So it is very much hardcore viable. And if you check out like the full videos of me like defeating Kalagado and Ravager, you will see like the fights were pretty smooth. Like there is not really any um real danger of dying there and when it comes to the gear there aren't like any crazy greens that you need you basically just need to get your hands on the sentinel of the three set and then some blue items some purple items some green like very very easy to get green rings as well and the build is pretty much done so without further ado let me just show you the skill allocation of this build and then devotions and then the gear and then we're gonna check out if the character still holds up to its form performance because there have been some slight nerfs to retaliation in general in the latest two patches and also to the Sentinel of the Three set in particular on top. So when it comes to the skill allocation, we are a soldier and an occultist making a Witchblade and on the soldier side you obviously want to max out the Warcry, put at least 12 points here. I can also like see you put more than 12 points here to get even more damage reduction. And we have one point to break morale, this is just there for like disruption, you don't really care about the um, resistance reduction on this at all because you're playing acid or not the physical and yeah. The disruption is pretty decent against multiple like elites, like hero mobs, but other than that, yeah, only a one-pointer here is needed. One-point fighting spirit, um, pretty nice, decent one-pointer, don't really need more than one point here, unless you have like some spare points to put here from other skills. Then we have a one-pointer into Blitz and one point into Blind Side. I kind of didn't use this that much against like super bosses, but if you're using this character to also like farm stuff in the main campaign or like farm stuff in the crucible or shadow ram then blitz is very much a very helpful tool to like zoom around quicker and then you do want to use blitz on top next up we have counter strike this is basically the build's main damage and this procs whenever you get hit by actually any attack and this will like have an aoe around you where it hits enemies for well retaliation damage and also additional 14 percent rat attack like retaliation damage added to attack so you definitely want to max this out at any cost next up we have manier's will i have actually 16 out of 16 points here well because i played this character on hardcore and um i mean generally you are probably fine like only putting one point here let me just see how many points you could pull here um you could actually like pull a couple of points here so yeah if you're playing if you're playing softcore you can definitely like get away with like putting less points here I just had like this at 16 out of 16, I think, because of hardcore and because I was kind of afraid to die, maybe. Um, but it turned out like it probably wasn't necessary to put as many here. You can definitely like put points into either like Warcry or, the, or like Fighting Spirit instead, then like into Many Reservoir here. Farewell. Next up, we have 10 out of 10 points into Military Conditioning. This is very good for the physique, like percent physique and health. Um, at least 10 points, 11 points is also pretty good. More than 11 points, I would not recommend though. 17 points into Overguard, 17 out of 12 to just have like the highest absorption, shield recovery, shield damage block, etc. on this that you can get. 12 out of 10 shield training, also like max out on the shield recovery time and shield block chance. 14 out of 12 for field command, you wanna keep this at an even point. 
when you overcap those like 12, 14, 16 and so on, because like every two points you will get another like 1% increased armor on top of the OA and DA. Only one point to squad tactics, the percent all damage does not affect retaliation damage, so yeah, you don't really get that much damage out of this. And, but I mean like 5% attack speed for like one point is still pretty good. After that you only get 1% casting and attack speed per point. And if you were like not playing a retaliation build then this would be actually good. But since you're playing retaliation build and you like don't get any like damage bonus from the all damage, it's not really that great. 8 out of 8 decorated soldier, mostly for elemental res and slow res, the physical damage doesn't matter here at all. But yeah, 8 out of 8 is pretty good when it comes to like resistances. 6 out of 8 points into skies of battle, you wanna put as many points here as you need to like achieve 100% armor absorption as well, as also to have like a decent stun and freeze res. The bleed res is mostly, like on most builds, it's not gonna be an issue. Uh, for this build, 6 out of 12, I mean 6 out of 8 was like the sweet spot, you don't need more on this here. As our exclusive skill, we have actually Manuel's Bulwark. This is a pretty obvious choice for retaliation builds. It has percent damage absorption, which is very, very good. It has health gen, which is decent, and also percent retaliation damage. On the Oculus side of things, we have the Curse of Reality with the vulnerability for the poison resistance reduction and also minus the A. So you want to max this out because you are playing an asset build. Then also we have Blood Rig maxed out to the max, as high as you can put this because of not only the heal and offensive ability, but also because of health regen and also acid retaliation. Then also we have Aspect of the Guardian, which has percent retaliation damage, which is also huge for a build like this. And on top of that you get basically all the poison rest you will ever need, and also 18% fizz rest, which is also very 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 good for a build like this. Just a 1 pointer into Solar Switchfire and a 1 pointer to second right, just for like some minor attack speed here and some minor like vitality resistance here. These points I feel like are not that necessary, you could like certainly put these points somewhere else if you wanted to. 1 point into bloody pox, and then 9 points into wasting. Um, up to 12 points I would say wasting is pretty good because of like the minus OA. And why do you want minus OA? Well you want minus OA, like you want to reduce enemy OA because you also want to use fevered rage. And with fevered rage you increase enemy OA by quite a bit, you also decrease their defensive ability and you also increase the enemy's total speed. This seems kind of like sketchy, especially for hardcore, and it also is a little bit sketchy against some of the super bosses like Kalagaja and Ravager. However, on this build, I was also like fine using Fevered Rage against Ravager in both phases and against Kalagaja in the first phase. In the second phase of Kalagaja, I did not use Fevered Rage anymore, like I didn't press this button at all anymore because it kind of didn't feel that safe anymore. But what Fevered Rage, or like the increase to enemy attack speed especially does is it basically gives you a lot more damage when you're playing retaliation because like every time an enemy hits you it will trigger your like retaliation damage and thus it will damage the enemy like way more and way quicker if the enemy has higher attack speed. So if you want to play safer you can like just not use this but then you will also like lose some damage. And I would say this build is tank enough to basically use Fever Rage all the time, except for maybe against Kalagadra. So um, you could like spec out of this when you find Kalagadra. And for all other content, especially for farming, you just like use Fever Rage. Also, I would maybe not use Fever Rage if you try to like push um, Shadow Realm to like very deep shards. Like if you want to push shard 80 or deeper, then you might not want to use Fever Rage anymore as well. But up until that point, it's a very, very good damage multiplier. Last but not least, we also have the Sigil of Consumption. Well, why do we have the Sigil of Consumption? Because we are using the Oculus Visage as our helmet here. And the Oculus Visage has 8% rat attack to Sigil of Consumption. So 8% of your total retaliation damage will be added to Sigil of Consumption. And because of that, the Sigil does deal some pretty decent damage. And because of that, you want to soft cap the first part of the sigil, because the first part of the sigil gives you the radius and also 30% love steal. So 30% of your retaliation damage that you add to the sigil, so like 30% of 8% of your total retaliation damage is gonna heal yourself. And that is a pretty like noticeable amount, and is probably also the reason why this build is able to face tank things like Kalagadra in the first place. I know some other retaliation builds don't use this, especially when you like play around the Kalagadra's visage instead of Oculus visage. 
But at least for hardcore, my personal like experience was with this build, like this kind of build that Oculus Visage does provide you uh, like a big chunk of sustain on top. So you might lose some damage compared to say a Calagados Visage, but for like safety and hardcore sustainability, this is way way superior. Moving on to the devotions, you can first of all see that I'm obviously using Murmur, like the rumor proc, because of the poison and acid resistance reduction. Murmur itself does not provide you like any retaliation damage whatsoever, however, minus X% RR is just mandatory in devotions for pretty much any damage type, so also for acid you want to use Rumor. Retaliation devotions such as for example Fetid Pool are also pretty nice, like the Affliction Pool is very very good now for retaliation, especially acid retaliation, so we're using that. Then we're also using the Targus Hammer, which is probably like a must-have on any retaliation build that has also a shield. So also this one. Um, Targo the Builder, pretty good um, shield wall proc for even more retaliation damage, which gets converted to acid mostly. Um, then we have the Tip the Scales for flat resistance reduction, 20 on this one. We have the Dried for healing, like additional healing and additional armor gain. We have, well, Eel, Hound, Scarab, Panther and Scholar's Light basically just as fillers to like, get the affinity for the devotions that we need. And the only other devotion that is pretty much left that's worth talking about is the Obelisk of Men here. This is pretty much still a very, very, very good retaliation devotion for any build that uses a shield as well. And yeah, that's basically why I'm using it right here as well. And that's already it for the devotions. Let's check out the gear. So for the gear, I'm using the Judgment of the Three, the Sentinel of the Three set. So this includes the Judgment of the Three Scepter, Defender of the Three Shield, Shoulder Guard of the Three Shoulders, and Armor of the Three um, Chest Guard. Well, the set is basically a set focused around um, Blood of Drig and Counter Strike, and also Bloody Pox to a certain extent. So you want to use Bloody Pox on Retaliation builds anyway, generally because of Fever Rage, and this set makes or well, like gives you even more incentive to do so, because it does increase attack speed for Bloody Pox even more. And that's like gives you even more damage because like you're getting hit more often and so yeah, four piece um, pretty much says explanatory here. Then we have the Oculus Visage as I mentioned earlier to like get you retaliation damage added to attack to Sidra of Consumption, which is basically more love steal, like more sustain. Then we have the Avenger of Karen, Avenger of Karen, right, as people call it as well. Those are just a very, very generically um, awesome emulator for soldiers plus 4 to max all resistances, like all of these get put up to 84 instead of um, 80 and also Aether up to 88. That is very very good when it comes to like sustain, like to not dying. And also it has a bunch of retaliation damage. So yeah, it's basically a perfect fit for a retaliation soldier like this. For the rings, we're using two creeping rings. Creeping rings are very very easy to farm actually in the like Agdenborg, wherever you go there you will have these plants and the plants can drop these rings. They can drop like three different rings I think, the creeping ring is one of them. And this one has built in acid retaliation damage as well as percent or retaliation damage, as well as plus three to aspect of the guardian, which is this ability, so it's perfect for a retaliation build as well. So you want to get ideally two of those and well, the roles that you get, like the affixes, they kind of like depend on like what you need. In my case I have an impervious of readiness and a Inquisitors of Gildem Arcanum. I mean the Gildem Arcanum stuff is pretty nice for retaliation builds because it has a chance to like reset the cooldown of your also like defensive skills like um, Bravdrig, Overguard, the Sigil actually as well and also Warcry. And in my case also the Living Fortress um, active ability from the Fortress Relic. I'm gonna talk about this later, this is not like the ideal damage relic, but it's very very nice for defense. So yeah, the of Gildem Arcanum suffix here is pretty nice and maybe it did help me also with like face snaking some of those Celestia bosses, but honestly like you don't necessarily need exactly these affixes and these are like not hard to get either, like Imperius of Readiness for example is a double magic, not even a single rare affix on this ring, this is like a one uh, magic prefix, one rare suffix ring, so yeah, like these are flexible, you know. For the gloves, we have a mythical black steel gauntlet, and this one you wanna—I mean, it's very, very good for retaliation. It's probably still like the best retaliation glove in the game. 
However, you want to make sure that you get a 6% physical resistance roll, right? Uh, at least for defense, it's like probably still the best one. There is like another one for acid, I think like Vile Scorn Bracers or something like that, which could be potentially higher damage for a build like this. However, like I really like this one a lot because it has plus 2 counter strike, so it has like plus skills to the main ability of this build. And it can roll up to 6% Fizzlerus, which is still like very, very good. For the boots, I'm using Vilescorn Greaves whenever I'm basically just farming stuff. And I was using Golemborn Greaves whenever I was like um, face tanking Celestials like Caligar and stuff like that. Golemborn Greaves um, does reduce your damage a bit compared to these. However, it gives you plus 2 to many Bulwark, so like even more absorption from Bulwark. And also, it has the Golemborn proc, which on hit gives you even more damage, I mean even more armor rather. So I have like 5, 4.9k armor with this one, 5.2k armor with this one, and whenever I'm getting hit I will have like, I don't know, more than 6k armor I think. So these are very very good when you like need additional armor to like face tank some Celestials for example. For the metal I'm using the Mythical Markovian Stratagem. You can certainly for damage also use like another metal here instead, However, I specifically wanted to use this one against like Kalagadra as well. And well, because Kalagadra is mostly physical, pierce damage, and then like a little bit of bleed and fire damage. And this is a metal that has plus 5 maximum to pierce resistance. So we are rocking like 92% max pierce loss here. So basically, her pierce damage doesn't really hurt us that much at all. And yeah, that's. Um, one of the reasons why we're using this one, and also it has retaliation damage on top, so it does also scale our damage a bit. Then we have the mythical thorn girdle of Mystic Glade, of the Mystic Glade. This one is also like plus two counter strike, acid retaliation damage, so yeah, not a bad fit at all. For the pants, we're using actually the Thornhide Legards, for again, like some all retaliation damage, counter strike, Menhir's Bulwark, and it also has the Thornhide proc, which doesn't help you at all against like super bosses, but if you're like playing, I don't know, Crucible or stuff like that. Um, the plus 100% all retaliation damage is pretty pretty good as well. Now when it comes to components, you might see that I'm actually using double Titan's Plating. Titan's Plating got um, actually buffed I think like twice in a row now in the last couple of patches. And it is pretty nice for armor second builds like this one. I would say it is better than a prismatic diamond now as well in the head if you are playing a heavy armor character like this one. So yeah, two of these for like percent physique and percent armor because yeah, on a soldier you can scale that armor very very well. Also, a ancient armor plate here and the pants is of like a scaled hide because armor absorption on a soldier is pretty good already because of um, scars of battle. And also additionally the um, obelisk of men here, uh, devotion. So you don't really need any armor absorption from components. I think you need like a little bit still. I'm literally only using one armor absorption component here, which is the ancient armor plate. But yeah, this also has percent armor, so yeah, like more armor, more absorption, that's like all you need here. And for basically all other slots, if you can afford, like not putting resistances here, you can always use a bladed plating, because bladed plating has health, OA, and retaliation damage, like percent retaliation damage. So if you want to like scale your retaliation damage further from components, feel free to use a bladed plating wherever you can. Um, you can also see that I was using a Mark of the Traveler on my like farming boots because my movement speed was absolutely abysmal. Um, like without Mark of the Traveler, it's even worse. That's why I was using this one to like stand still against super bosses and have a like Mark of the Traveler on the boots that I use for farming, so that I at least have some more movement speed. I mean, it's still horrible, but at least a little bit higher than like this. And finally I have a Molten Skin on my belt. I had a Molten Skin on my belt first of all because of Kalagadra. Like Kalagadra has some fire damage, so you want to have some decent fire overcap as well. Uh, 46 is kind of barely enough when you like use a pot on top to have like higher than um, 60. You want around 60% overcap against Kalagadra. So yeah, that is... Um, why we use a Molten Skin here as well. And also Molten Skin is one of the components that has actually flat armor. And if you put flat armor on the belt, it is way better than flat armor on anything else. Because flat armor on the belt, and also like the belt's armor, is basic global armor. So any flat armor that you apply to your belt, or that you have on your belt, is basically applied to every single other slot as well. So putting flat armor components on your belt 
is basically six times as effective as putting a flat armor component onto anything else because like if you put it for example in your boots then that flat armor would only be added to your boots and none of the other slots and yeah so it's way better to put it on your belt than anything like anywhere else all right that pretty much colors everything about this build i would say let's check it out in action a bit um i mean i could show you a like dummy kill dumb here however um a bird that relies on getting hit to deal damage, it's not gonna have like an amazing dummy kill time, right? So... I don't even know if this is like worth showing you or not. Because like it's not gonna... like the dummy's not gonna move. Like the HP of the dummy's not gonna change here at all. Yeah, let me like not do this. This is like not uh, worth showing at all. Um, I actually forgot about two more components though. I forgot about the... Serrated shell and your shield. This is basically the best component for a shield for retaliation. First of all, because it has fizz, like flat fizz retaliation, percent all retaliation, 20% shield recovery time, that's more than any other component can give you in the shield as well. And then we have the brutal shield slam, which is like another ability that you can use in melee that has, well, 18% retaliation damage added to attack, which is not like that little of an amount, so it's pretty, pretty good actually. And in the scepter we have the... Um, Seal of Blades, just to like give me some more additional lifesteal. I feel like on a build like this, where most of your last is from Sigil, you could probably like put a Seal of Might instead here as well. Um, seal of Blades is pretty decent though, because it also like increases your armor by 8%. I mean, Seal of Might would give you more physical resistance on the other hand. Physical resistance on this build is pretty good. By the way, it has 61% permanently, and when you ever like whenever you use Living Fortress on top you would have over 80% physical so that is pretty good. And also have some like face tanky celestials. It's actually even more when you put Golden Borns on. So instead of showing you like a very underwhelming dummy kill time, let's just show you a Ravager kill time instead. Now I'm gonna try to tempt Ravager without any pots, because this is still like my softcore save from the last like season 1 league. And yeah, I don't really have like any mats here, recraft any pots whatsoever. I did defeat Ravager and Kalagadra with Fevered Rage, with pots in the league. However, I deleted like all of my crafting gear and etc. after the league, or like when the league stopped because of like, well, the tiebreaker being Iron Boots. So you wanted to add as many Iron Boots as you could get at this end of the league, so I like sold all my mats as well. And now I don't have like any maths to well, craft stuff. Um, this means I'm gonna just like show you Ravager and Kala without Fevered Rage here, which is overall probably like the safer way to like attempt these super bosses anyway. All right, so you wanna spam your Sigil and your Warcry all the time, and also like make sure that Elric Shard and Bloody Pox and Curse of Reality is on as well all the time. So let's start here. Also, you might notice that I have um, stopped using Blitz here for this fight because I rather want, well, like to be able to like, move around with my right mouse button around Ravager in case things get a little bit sketchier. Also, this is Ravager of Souls, so. Um, fumble is like a little bit of an issue here. Actually, it's not really that much of an issue because, like, the standard retaliation damage cannot fumble anyway. It's only like my default attacks that are gonna fumble here, and they don't do any damage anyway. Like, I don't have, say, Righteous Fever on this build. I only have Shield Slam, so, like, only Shield Slam needs to hit. Everything else doesn't, like, need to hit at all here. So one problem with like my like not using any pots here is that my resistance cells, especially Aether and Vitality, whenever he has the eye up, are like actually below 8%, so that's a little bit sketchy. Not sure if I can even uh, do it like this now. But we'll see. I might have to like farm the vendor in Homestead until I get the Vitality and Aether pop there as well. But I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna like farm the Royal Jet as well. 
just to like uh, do this character with, like try to kill Ravager with like proper pots here. You can certainly also like notice the kill time being a lot slower with the rage compared to like what the skill time was in the league. This is a lot slower actually, like a lot a lot slower. Because um, yeah. I also miss a lot, like away is not really that great on this character, especially without the minus DA from the Feeder Rage debuff. It is like very there. Right, we're approaching 50% here. He's gonna enrage at 50%. But so far we can't sell a place tank. And yeah, on a build like this, this is not really the most exciting fight. But it gets the job done. Just make sure to use your debuffs and buffs of cooldown, basically. And like, don't forget the pot whenever you like drop around uh, like half HP. Without Fever Rage, this becomes rather a average kill time, not like an amazing kill time anymore. But I would say it's still like rather safe compared to like some other builds. Okay, that hit me with a pretty big hit there, like a proc from the as well. But oh, that's also like why you have many as well on a soldier in the first place, not to like not die in uh, situations like that. Another way you can play this fight on pretty much any character is whenever you see the eye debuff on you on the like that bottom right corner above your energy bar. Like whenever you see the eye, you just like this one here, Ravage's presence, you disengage because that one has a hefty chunk of like resistance shred. And uh, most builds won't be able to like face tank stage two while having the eye debuff on themselves. This character barely can without pots and without like Fever Rage, but like if you were using Fever Rage here on top, and I'm pretty sure you would need pots to like face tank stage two with like Fever Rage on top. I mean with the Ravager's presence debuff on top. Like all the situations when I drop low is whenever he has his eye on top of me and because he drop he does like drop down my aether and that healthy resistance also like below 80% now. And like now again. It's actually fine. Okay. And he is pretty much dead. As I said, like not the quickest time. Without Fever Rage, but considering this has no pots, right? Like no ointments, only HP pots, nothing else. It's still like totally fine, I would say. Yep, there's another mirror as well. <laughs> Alright. There we go. Ravager down. That's obviously a lot safer when you play with pots. So, like, don't do it without pots. Don't do it like this. Just use pots, especially when you're playing hardcore. Like, just use pots. Okay, so I did manage to get a couple of potions from this guy here, Isaiah Redden, over in Homestead. And also I did manage to get a Celestial Presence, I mean a Celestial Essence rather. So we can attempt Karagadra once again on this patch 1.1.9.1 here. 
And let's see how we fare against Kala. I will, again, not use Fevered Rage against Kala here. Last time, also in the league, I did use Fevered Rage against the first part. Like the first 50% of her HP, like the first phase, basically. I did not use it for the second phase, and since the build got nerfed a bit, I feel like I will probably not use any Fevered Rage here for stage 1 or 2. However, I will probably, since I have the pots now, also attempt Ravager once again with pots and with Fevered Rage after killing Kala here. Just to like see how the build does perform. Um, like with the pots and with uh, Fevered Rage against the Ravager as well. So first of all, you should always like make sure to clear out the area around Kalagadra. Um, if you plan to, well, not face tank her, but rather kite a bit around, then you should like clear out all of this, like all these areas, because there are some vipers that can spawn here, and the vipers, well, um, they can heal. They can even heal Kalagadra like up to full. So, um, yeah, if you're playing a build and you want to kill Kalagadra and you want to kite her, then make sure to like clear out the entire area here, because um, you don't want like any vipers to spawn out of the sand here while you're like face thinking her or like kiting her trying to kill her and like ruin your day so yeah um we got the bots we got the ses uh elastic essence as well let's go i don't need that one i don't need this one either there we go okay Hopefully we're not gonna need more than like two, like 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 one pot. I mean one pot usually lasts for what 7.5 minutes, and, like 450 seconds. That's my point. I mean 7.5 minutes. So let's hope we're not gonna need to reapply the pots here. If we do need to reapply, though, I brought two of each. So so I should probably like, put uh, move to here just in case. Like I don't really need the bots against her. The scariest ability about Kala, from my experience, is actually not her herself, but like her attacks. Um, it's more so like her shifting sands at the like on the ground that can like sometimes shotgun you, and also like her tornadoes that are pretty annoying. Uh, all of that is more annoying, I feel like, when you kite around her though. Like if you just face tank them. Most of that is not gonna matter that much. But yeah, from her like normal attacks, I feel like yeah, the flappy flap flap attack, right? That's like still the, the most dangerous one, I would say. This one, right? the wing flap. I mean, again, you can see like stage one kill time being uh, quite a bit lower than compared to when I killed this character, I mean, this Kalagadra boss here in the league. However, I do want to just like play it a little bit safer here because the build got nerfed a bit. But I mean, so far so good, we didn't use a single fortress so far, which is um, pretty good. But it's only stage 1 anyway, like stage 1 should always be smooth, otherwise you can like forget about facing stage 2. 
Alright, we're approaching stage 2 like right now. It's gonna have a lot more attack speed now. Let's use the fortress here as well. Gonna do more damage, have higher damage absorption. Basically, stronger everything, right? Might wanna also like check out your mana, like use an energy pot every now and then. She really doesn't um, have as scary like single hits compared to Ravager I feel like. Like whenever Ravager hits you with one of his like default attacks, whenever he also has Ravager's presence on you, like the double debuffs on you, then like he hurts a lot with like single attacks. I feel like Kala doesn't hurt as much with like single attacks compared to Ravager. Um, but she certainly has like higher attack speed and has like more going on all the time as well. But I mean, so far is still looking good, I would say. We didn't have a single. I mean, there's a well proc, I say, and there is. There is the first proc. Uh, you know what? Actually, I think I have the wrong boots on me. Right? I don't have bottom board on me. Oops. <laughs> I was playing this with the wrong boots. I should have, like, a lot more armor now. And thus the build should be safer now, hopefully. I think my man here is well as up again, by the way. Like, I, it could proc again. Yeah, it's like ready to proc again. Totally safe here. Alright, I'm considering I was using like the wrong boots for pretty much two thirds of the fight. Or like three quarters of the fight. This is pretty smooth. Pretty smooth face anchor. Certainly not the quickest without the fever rage, but I mean, if you wanna play this in hardcore, then you wanna play it like this, right? You don't wanna die. Don't wanna take any chances. If you're playing softcore, like, be free to, like, use fever rage all the time here. You got nothing to lose except for, like, time, I guess, and, like, a Celestial Essence. So. I kind of hope we can make this within the time of the ointments there, that would be nice. Like, I don't want to reapply, that's kind of annoying. Having to reapply like in mid fight. And as long as we kill her within the first pot here, like within the first couple of ointments, that means that we are below 7.5 minutes of the kill time, which is still like a reasonable time, I would say. I mean, I know there are like some or there were, rather, some super crazy min-max retail builds that can like kill a cut and out in their one minute even. I don't know if that's like still the case, considering like, all the retail builds got nerfed last patch. Like twice in a row, actually. Like, last two patches, both 1.1.1. I mean 1.1.9, as well as 1.1.9.1. Um, pretty sure those builds also took like a pretty big hit when it comes to like kill time. Um, Probably still like way quicker than this. On the other hand, I think most of those are also like harder to build than this one. This one is a pretty easy to build, like easy to put together build, I would say, compared to most other retail builds. But yeah. Also, most of those like crazy kill times. Okay, my posts are actually like running out now. That's not good. They are like actually running out here. I don't want to reapply them. Let's see how it feels like without the pots. I still have the elixir drink who are running, but everything else is like down now. I can certainly feel the build being a lot squishier now. During the uptime of Fortress, though, it's still fine. I mean, ideally, you should like reapply once. Their pots like go down, right? Like once they run out. 
uh, that may still work, but like only using one pair of pots here. Got another Kanagados, another Godanborn Greaves, seems good. So yeah, as, actually let me try to face tank Ravager again, this time with pots, and this time also with all the ointments. We got like still a couple of ointments left here, right? I still have like all the jellies, and um, yeah, I did also manage to like get some vitality and aether resistance pots, this is what I was missing last time. So let's try again here against uh, Ravager. And also, yeah, yeah, talking about Fevered Rage, right? Let's get Fevered Rage as well. Let's respec real quick. Pull like one point from wasting and like put it over to Fevered Rage. Let me clear your mind of there we go. Now, if we manage to face tank this, we should be able to probably kill a Ravager within the timing of the spot. Like within the time we have left on the. Uh, Elixir of the Dragon Wool here. So let's actually just like start reapplying here. They have three giant stuff, Aether, Vitality, Resistances. We don't need the Fire and Bleeding Pot that we needed against Kala here. And there we go. The eye is still a little scary there, I'm not gonna lie. Like when he has the eye up and he like crits me because of Fevered Rage. Yeah, he has like a 4% chance to crit me actually. Like when he crits me with the eye that's like getting scarier. If he crits me like right here, yeah exactly, that's like when it's scarier. Right? That's the scary thing about Fear Rage, like, he can crit. Unless you get even more DA. So, like, whenever he has the eye up, like, the Ravager's presence debuff up, you might want to, like, disengage a little bit, just so, like, he doesn't hit you as much. Which is why you need the move too. Right, like, right now. If you get crit right now, you have to like move instantly. Or you just like make him bug out around the crystal or something, I don't know. It's what just happened there. Yeah. Making like... Make him like lose to the crystal whenever he has the debuff up, right? So that he like can't attack you that often. And then it's like pretty smooth actually. Yeah, there we go. Like this is a way quicker time, like kill time than first time, obviously. And that's how you will basically kill Ravager on this character. At least when you have the bots. Seems good. And that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Also make sure to check out the Crucible video as well as the Shadow Realm 65 to 66 round that I did recently on this character on this current patch. Um, just to make sure that the build is still viable on this current patch. And yeah, I hope to see you around on the next one. Thanks for watching.